When you picture a European winter city break, Vienna has to be at the top of your list. Brimming with beautiful architecture, cozy coffee shops, and too many Christmas markets to count, it is not hard to fall in love with this place. With just under 48 hours on the clock, here is everything we did, ate, and saw on a cozy winter weekend getaway to Austria's capital city. We've just arrived on the train from Innsbruck. It was about a four hour journey. We actually just spent a couple of days in Innsbruck and Hallstatt. So I will link that vlog up here if you're interested. But the journey was so beautiful. I think my new love is Austrian transport. Not only is it super reliable, but in winter, just magical. Like we went from Innsbruck where there were like these small little mountain towns, everything was covered in snow. And as we got close to Vienna, it kind of transformed into like farmland and like there was still green grass everywhere the most stunning way to spend four hours I would always rather do that over like going to the airport even if the flight is only one hour and we've just checked into the most stunning hotel I was just reading a little bit about it here and it says it was built in the 1800s and then sort of refreshed to have this like 1920s 30s glamour and you definitely get that feeling from like the second you walk in the value for money is incredible I think it's only about 135 pounds a night for sort of like the smallest most basic room which is what we have this is Hotel Josephine a boutique design hotel tucked away in a quiet street just off one of Vienna's main shopping areas. Everything is on theme here, right down to the last detail, and even with the most basic room, you get a complimentary bottle of wine and some beautiful robes. The hotel also has a dedicated room full of records with thousands to choose from, and their common space is such a cozy area, especially with the decorations at Christmas time. Now that you've seen where we are staying, let's go and explore Vienna. First up on the agenda is a very Jess-related activity. It is a pastry tour, so we're gonna go and taste all these delicious things wander around the streets, get our bearings, let's go and explore. All wrapped up, we waltzed our way down the main shopping street and into the centre of town. I just love how the light at golden hour dances across these buildings in European cities, it is so beautiful. And as the sun began to set, we made our way to the first district to kick off our food tour. Things of course started at a traditional local Viennese cafe, where we had Viennese Milan coffee and apple strudel, which apparently is a sin to serve with custard, although personally I have to disagree. Stop 2 was in the 4th district at a cafe that is quite literally run by grandmas and I I just love this whole concept. We cozied up and devoured a bunch of different cakes as well as a filled bun with, yes, my favorite, custard or vanilla sauce as they call it here. Around the corner we went to the most amazing chocolate shop with so many flavours to choose from and yes, you bet I walked away with a fair few souvenirs. And to wrap the evening up we landed back in a traditional restaurant where we took a break from the sweets with goulash, schnitzel and tafelspitz, as well as some Austrian wine and beer. But of course we finished the tour off on a sweet note with some of my favourite desserts I've tried. If you see top from dumplings on the menu, you have to get them. All in all this was a really unique food tour because they took us around so many districts using the metro. Such a great way to get your bearings on the first day in a city. Good morning, today is our only full day here in Vienna, so we've got quite a bit planned. We're going to do some cafe hopping, explore some cute areas, go and check out some museums, and of course, all of the Christmas markets. But first we are up bright and early because I've somehow managed to get a booking at Cafe Central which is admittedly one of the more like popular and hyped cafes in Vienna but I have heard that the building is just beautiful so I really want to go and see it so let's go and see is it worth it. is more than just any cafe. It is a Viennese institution that opened back in the 1800s. A trendy spot for all the intellectuals and world leaders of the time, it is kind of ironic to think that it is now a tourist destination popularized by Instagram. Now, is it worth it? In short, yes, but on a few conditions. Try and book on their website for an 8 a.m. slot and get out of there before nine. Even on a weekday, it gets super busy after nine and really does lose the charm as a relaxing morning in a beautiful cafe. I kid you not, we have had an entire YouTube crew setting up lighting and camera tripods next to us, so just be prepared for that. The breakfasts are okay and priced for the popularity. The building is beautiful and the pastries are fantastic, so definitely don't miss those.
After strolling through the beautiful streets, our next stop was this museum, which I, I'm not even going to try and pronounce. This was an absolutely gorgeous building that has actually also been around since the 1800s, boasting Renaissance revival style architecture. What is good to know is that they also have a really beautiful cafe here. So if you don't want to start your day at the crack of dawn at Cafe Central, I think you will get an equally stunning experience here. Now I also spotted my favorite glue vine mug that I had seen on our whole trip just outside the museum. So we had to stop by and pick it up, of course. I think this little Christmas boot mug might be my most prized possession now. only in the city for 48 hours, I do try to book in an afternoon exploring outside of the main areas. The Svittleberg neighbourhood isn't actually too far of a walk out from Central, but it is super quiet and picturesque. Here we rummaged our way through all of the vintage shops, Ryan found a book that has been on his wish list for ages at this very cool independent boutique, and of course we stopped off for an afternoon coffee. We just quickly popped back to the hotel to put on a few extra layers because it got quite cold last night. Now we're off to do a little bit of Christmas market hopping and see the ones we haven't seen so far, which is maybe about another two or three. Tonight we have a few Christmas markets on our list, starting at this one outside the church. This was by far the most beautiful, especially with the lights at Blue Hour. A really nice relaxing family vibe, but it was a little bit short on food options. Although I picked up this boozy hot chocolate with amaretto, so no complaints here. Next on the agenda is Europe's biggest and most famous Christmas market located outside the city hall. There were so many good food choices here, as well as light trails, ice skating, fair rides and entertainment. You definitely won't get bored at this market, but you will have to navigate navigate all the crowds to do anything. And our last stop of the evening was back at the Spittleberg market which takes over the winding streets of this beautiful district. This felt like the market that people who live in Vienna actually go to. It seemed like everyone was just getting off work and out grabbing a mulled wine. This is one of my favourite winter activities so I felt right at home. on our last day in Vienna I forgot I was trying to make a YouTube video and didn't get any clips to camera but I did enjoy this rather delightful breakfast down the road from our hotel. The weather this morning was rubbish but we persevered because I really wanted to explore Nash Market, one of Vienna's most famous markets with over 120 stalls. There were so many delicious looking restaurants here so I would definitely make this a lunch stop if you can but if you know me you know I love a good hot chocolate so back to the chocolate shop we went from our first day for one last mug of the good stuff. And with that, our time in Vienna is sadly over. We are off to a beautiful snowy Prague for the next three nights, so stick around for that vlog. And in the meantime, give this one a watch, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.